check out this heat map. Would you believe that I actually made this in about two minutes in Microsoft Excel? The good news is you can learn how to make it today too. It's super easy to do and I'll show you exactly how it's done. To make this map, I'm using data from the US Geological Survey. It's elk GPS collar data from the National Elk Refuge for about a 12 year period to, or sorry, about a 10 year period, 2006 to 2015. You can download this data for free on the internet at this URL, or you can pick up the Excel file that I'm creating in this tutorial directly from geospatialschool.com. If you sign up for our $4 a month membership, um, it's all available, as is this video, without ads. All right, let's get started. So I've already downloaded this file. I have in my downloads here. Um, just come down here and click download on the Elk GPS collar data. I'm going to open up this CSV file in Microsoft Excel. Okay, you can see that we have the data here. Let's just take a quick look at things. Um, we have an elk ID, a date time, a time zone, UTM coordinates, which we won't use, UTM zone, which we won't use, the latitude, the longitude, the month, the year, and the time. Um, I'm guessing this is time in, I don't know, minutes or hours. Um, probably hours in the year, but we can do just fine with this date time over here. So the first thing we need to do is select our data. I'm going to select the top row and I'm going to use control shift down arrow to select all the data. Now I'm going to format this as a table. I'm going to just select the light and I'm going to keep the defaults here. My data has headers and I've selected the, the whole, um, the, the full data for the for the uh, table. Now I'm going to click turn off the filters because I don't need to filter anything and here I have my data. Now the way we make a map is we go to insert and we do 3D map but it's not going to work here. We could insert a, just a basic map but we want to do a 3D map because it's going to give us a whole lot more options. But we can't do that because we are in a CSV but if we save this as an X SLX, then it will let us do it. So we're going to go to File, and I'm going to Save As, and I'm going to Save to a location. And you can see here I have that file downloaded. I'm going to change this to XLSX, and I already have a file saved here that I practiced on. I'm going to save that, and I'm just going to overwrite it. So yes, let's replace it. And now it's saving. Once it's done, we're ready to go. And now you can see that the 3D map option on the insert toolbar. So click on insert, go to 3D maps, and click open 3D maps. Now this is going to open a new window, which may appear on a different screen when it opens. We shall see. And it's going to be the 3D maps window, and they'll have the controls to make not only 3D maps, but also 2D maps. Okay, so it opened up. It took about a minute, and it was over on my other screen, so I'm going to drag things over. This is what I had. And you can see here we now have this globe to play with. Uh, it's interactive. We can click and drag. Super cool. But what we want to do here is uh, create a new layer for our map. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to close out this field list. We have this layer panel over on the right side. It has our layer, layer pane. If we lose something, we have a tour editor. We can turn things off up here. So we can turn off the tour editor. We can turn off the layer pane. Or we can turn that back on. We can turn the field list back on and so forth. We want the layer pane open right now. If you don't have it, just click layer pane over in the view section of the home bar. And we want to add location data. We're going to add a field, and we're going to add our longitude. And we're going to come over here to select, and this is going to be our x-coordinate. We're going to add a field, which is going to be our longitude. 
sorry, our latitude, and this is going to be our y coordinate. And there you can see that our data were just plotted in this area. However, they're all the same value, and that is not what we want. We want to create a heat map. Now, this is how crazy easy it is to make a heat map out of point data with Excel. We come over up here on the top. You can see that we can do a column chart. We can convert to a bubble chart. We can convert to regions. We don't have anything there. But if we click on the heat map, just give it a second to load, there we go. There is a heat map. Now we can come down and make some customizations by going to layer options. Um, I like to reduce the color scale a little. You can see how that impacts uh, how much um, the high density areas bleed out. You'll want to change this based on your data. 10% looks good here. We can also change our radius of influence um, somewhere around 75% I think looks pretty good. Uh, we can do make this based on the sum or the average. We'll do it on the sum, looks a little better. Colors, default, we can make custom colors if we would like to. We can do our low color to be yellow and our high color to be blue or to be a different color. Um, there's a lot of different options here that you could use but we'll change this back to the default colors. And we can show zeros, negatives, or nulls. Um, and those are the basics of it right there. The layer options um, and setting the um, location. We can also set a value here. We don't want to do, we don't have any values except for the location. So there's actually no value associated with this. Like there's no, the elk was here for this long or the elk was this big or whatever. We can add a time field, which we can use for DT. It will recognize that. It will reload. And now you'll notice that once we've done that, we have this play bar down here. So we can actually create an animation out of this just by adding that date time. And so when we click play, you can see that it's going to show how the density changes over the entire course of this period. Now, And that's just how easy it is to create an animated heat map with Microsoft Excel using point data. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can control this animation a little more, make some scenes in a tour, filter down your data so that you can present your data a little more succinctly and uh, with a little more nuance. So uh, if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe. If you found this useful, click like for me and let other people know that this is a useful video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.